Okay, Year 7, this is one for you, and we're going to be looking at what I'm going to be talking about today. 1066, who should be the King of England? This takes you back to the start of the year when we were looking at uh, England in 1066, and who should be king? There is a crisis, a crisis of succession. Uh, there's a big debate about who should be the next King of England, because if you'll remember, in 1066, January 1066, uh, Edward the Confessor, the King of England, dies. And when he dies, uh, he didn't have a son. In fact, he didn't have any children, but he didn't have a son. So he had no one who could uh, take over from him, um, or not a direct descendant or heir. So there was a problem, there was a crisis. Um, England didn't have a king, and it wasn't obvious who was going to be the next king of England. And we have looked, Year 7, at three of the candidates, three of the main candidates, um, who wanted to be king in 1066. So... I'm going to start off with, or talking about, candidate number one, Harold Godwinson. So, he was chosen to be king by Edward on Edward's deathbed. Edward on his deathbed went, ugh, Harold, um, or something a bit like that, and chose Harold Godwinson to replace him to be the next king. Now, Harold had been uh, obviously chosen by Edward on his deathbed, um, but also, Harold had also been chosen by the Witan. The Witan. Now, the Witan were the most powerful, a group of the most powerful people in England, um, such as the, um, the earls and the barons and the bishops, the most powerful men in England uh, made up the Witan. And they'd also chosen Harold. They'd all got together in a, in a meeting, basically, and decided that they wanted Harold to be king as well. So clearly, he had quite a lot of support. Um, Harold was also the most powerful earl in England to begin with. He controlled a part of England called Wessex, or the earldom of, of Wessex, um, which Wessex was the most powerful um, earldom in England. It was the richest and uh, the most important, and Harold controlled that. He controlled Wessex. Um, so that was another reason why he maybe should be king, because he was used to looking after a very powerful uh, and wealthy area, which England as a country was. Um, he'd also been very close to Edward. Um, for starters, he was Edward's brother-in-law. So Edward had married Harold's sister, Edith. So they were brothers-in-law, they were related uh, by marriage. Uh, and Harold had worked very closely with Edward. Um, Harold had looked after the country, or basically run the country, when Edward was too busy. Edward, towards the end of his life, spent a lot of his time hunting and um, building Westminster Abbey. Uh, not himself, he was overseeing it, he had people to do it for him, he wasn't actually building it himself. Um, but that took up a lot of time, and Harold um, actually ran the country, basically, or looked after the country while Edward was busy doing that. And Edward, um, sorry, Harold actually... Um, inherited a nickname at the time, um, which was Subregulus, which ba uh, basically means Deputy King. Okay, so Harold was clearly quite an important man, a very important man in England. Um, you know, people are basically calling him the Deputy King. Um, again, that kind of indicates that maybe he should have, um, he, was, he was right to become the next King of England. So he's got quite a strong claim. The next candidate I'm going to talk about, candidate two, is Harold Hardrada, another Harold, but spelt differently, Harold Hardrada, uh, the Viking. Um, his claim isn't that strong. Um, he's not related to Edward um, at all. No, no relation. Um, remember that Edward and Harold Godwinson are related by marriage. Um, Harold Hardrada is the king of Norway. And he'd been convinced to invade England to take the crown. Uh, by Harold Godwinson's brother called Tostig, Tostig Godwinson. Now, Tostig and Harold Godwinson had had a big fallout um, in 1065. And as revenge, Tostig had gone to Norway to speak to Harold Hardrada and convinced him, convinced Harold Hardrada, uh, to go to England and try and take the throne when Edward died. Um, but Har uh, Harold Hardrada also claimed he should be king um, because the previous kings of Norway, remember Harald Hardrada is the king of Norway, the previous kings of Norway um, had ruled England before in, in, in previous years. Um, so Hardrada basically said, my descendants, the kings of Norway, the previous kings of Norway have also ruled England, um, so I should too. Um, there'd actually been a historic agreement between two of the previous kings of, of Norway and England, Magnus of Norway and Arthur Canute of England, 
um, that whoever died first, the other one um, would become king of both countries, Norway and England. So Hard Harder Harder used that. He said, you know, there's a historic agreement uh, that I should be king of England. I'm already king of Norway. Um, so you know, move over. I should be the new king of England. I'm king now, or I should be king now. Um, so not the strongest of claims, but certainly there's there's some legitimacy to it, or he says there is anyway. The final candidate that we've looked at this year is William of Normandy. William of Normandy. Now, William and Edward are very distantly related. Um, William's granddad's sister was Edward's mother. Um, so a distant relation, um, but related nonetheless. Um, now, William based his claim to the throne, the English throne, um, on promises made to him previously. Uh, now, you'll remember this, you should remember this. In 1064, Harold Godwinson had swore uh, or swore an oath to William. Remember, an oath is a holy agreement. You swear an oath on something holy, holy relics. Um, Harold, has, Harold Godwinson had sworn to William, um, allegedly, that he was going to let William become King of England when Edward died. Now, we don't know exactly what was in this promise. It's kind of been lost in history. But it's likely that that's what Harold was swearing. I, Harold Godwinson, promise you, William, on God's name, in God's honour, um, that I will let you become king when Edward dies. Um, not only that, but Edward may also have promised William that he could be king uh, in 1051. In 1051, Edward had, had had a big fallout with Harold's family, the Godwin family. Um, he'd fallen out with Harold and Harold's father and all of the Godwins and Godwinsons. Um, he'd fallen out with them all. And in 1051, William came to England um, for a visit. Um, and it's very likely on that visit that Edward said, right, William, well, given that I don't have any children and given that I've fallen out with the Godwin family now or the Godwinsons, um, I want you to be king when I die. Uh, so it's likely that Edward had promised William in 1051. Remember, though, that he does also on his deathbed promise it to Harold, which is a bit of a problem. Um, also, the Pope... Pope, who you should all know by now, year seven, is the most important man in the in the Christian church, or the Catholic church anyway. Um, really powerful figure, arguably the most powerful person in Europe, um, or in the world at this point. Um, also supported William's claim, because he said, right, well, if Harold's sworn to you, William, that he's going to make you king, or let you be king, if he's sworn on God's name and he's broken that promise, that's one of the worst things you can do. That's appalling. That's terrible behaviour. Um, so the Pope actually supports William's claim, um, which, you know, the Pope supports you back in really super Christian religious Europe, um, where everybody believes in God. Um, this is a big deal. And actually, William ends up getting a lot of extra soldiers to come and help him because the Pope has given him permission. So a lot of the soldiers think, oh, well, the Pope says it's okay, then I'm going to go too. Um, having said that, going back to this promise that Harold has made, um, whether he did promise the throne to William or not, we don't know, but it's likely. Um, Harold probably didn't have that much choice. Um, remember that Harold had been shipwrecked and he'd been rescued by William. Um, in 1064 so either out of gratitude as a way of saying thank you um, he'd promised William or maybe he felt a bit threatened because William kind of took Harold with him and said oh, I've saved you now um, you know here you are in my um, castle you know surrounded by my men um, you know maybe Harold felt a little bit threatened and thought I better just promise William that he can be king I won't keep this promise but maybe I should just promise it to him again we don't know but that is, a, a, is also quite likely um, so there the throne. You've got, as I say, Harold Godwinson, uh, Harold Hardrada and William of Normandy. Uh, hopefully it's reminded you, Year 7, of a few things, because obviously it's been a while since we've looked at this at the start of the year, but hopefully it's reminded you of a few things there. Uh, and out of interest, why don't you comment below uh, who you think should have been king in 1066? It'd be quite interesting to see uh, just what you guys think. So I will see you soon.